now we will bring this down and go live. Okay, shalom, we are live. My name is Dr. Tova Goldfein and this is TMS Roundtable. We are streaming live from Israel. It's 10 o'clock and I meet Rose here um, weekly and she is my brave and courageous and wonderful <laughs> partner in this amazing work and she gets up early in the morning sometimes at 5 a.m today it's a, she got a break and she got up at 6 a.m to go live at 7 from melbourne australia and you, you all know how happy i am to be here on a monday with rose hi rose love seeing you good morning Eva. good morning esther now this morning we have esther abigail now esther has a journey which hopefully should tell us about her journey from education to actually healing and it's a wonderful wonderful way she has of healing and not only does she bring that ISF internal family systems model to her healing capacity but she also has other um, what I, I wouldn't call it alternatives but add an add-ons to help people find their true selves because at the end of the day what we're all trying to do is help people to get to themselves their true selves not the self that they want to put out there or the self that's hurting or in pain or feeling miserable so esther thank you so much for being willing to share your model of care with others mm -hmm. and could i just ask you to introduce yourself Give us a little bit of a timeline sort of thing of, you know, how you got there, your journey. And then please talk about IFS. And in, this intuitive painting always intrigues me. And I would just really love for our audience to have an idea of how important it is that they use their other talents to heal their hearts. So over to you, Esther. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rose. Um... Yeah, I, as I was telling Rose before, I, uh, I'm an English teacher, an English language teacher. And, um, and I was always very interested in people and what makes them tick and how people heal. And so I started um, very slowly, I started doing like college courses in counseling and psychotherapy. And then I decided to take the plunge and actually do a degree um, when I was living in Manchester in England. Um, and I was always looking for kind of how to go deeper into, you know, cause when you talk and people tell the stories, it's quite easy to stay at the surface, how to like deepen it so that people could really heal um, from what was troubling them and their experiences. Um, and so I started kind of getting interested in expressive arts and I started art journaling and I used to write journal a lot as well. Um, and yeah, that was one of part of my degree I really enjoyed. And I actually did like a small dissertation on uh, expressive arts and healing. And then I took the plunge. I moved to Israel almost seven years ago. And um, yeah, it was a huge life change. Um, and then when I was, after I came to Israel, I think I started listening to, um, talks, um, by the founder of internal family systems therapy. And I, I was like, wow, this could really help people. This is really, um, the types of things he spoke about were fascinating. Um, and then I saw that in Jerusalem, they had an English speaking course an IFS course. So. I decided to go for that and um, so I did the level one and then I carried on to do the level two and um, it's given me a lot of tools um, which I'd like to speak a bit about tonight. Oh, do please um, do. Yeah, um, how people can focus in on their bodies to see like um, what's held in the body um, how we can work with the inner child to help the inner child um, kind of realize all the beliefs it's carrying and the pain it's carrying 
and be able to transform that. Um, so yeah, the IFS is a very um, powerful model. Um, and then a few months ago, I saw um, there was a course in um, teaching intuitive painting, how to teach intuitive painting. And I just, it was my intuition just like, go for it, go for it. Mm -hmm. And so I started uh, my training, which I'm kind of just a cup, uh, my third month of, of training. And I'm, um, I'm running a course um, here in Jerusalem. Um, at the moment, it's only women. We had one man join, but he kind of dropped out. Um, but um, my students are finding that they, they can really get to quite deep places with intuitive painting. Um, so that's something that people with TMS um, might find to be a very good tool. Um, so what if they're not an artist? What if they, they just like, does it have to be someone who's artistically driven or can this be, look, we all know about journaling. We all, I, I was talking the other week about um, people who draw their future or draw, have a vision and draw it. And that becomes the neurological path pathway if they just draw and then when they implement what they drew they can create changes in their brain so that's right is that kind of what you're talking about if they just drew or can you elaborate well, on that the way it's um i'm training with um dr pinky feinstein and here he's an israeli psychiatrist and it's a very clever method that the only goal is to cover the page so you get a page like a it's just kind of card it's like Bristol they call it here in Israel and the only goal for that like it's like eight to ten minutes cover the page wow. so there's no right and wrong wow. you know but like that. as you're covering the page and you, you have to do it quite hard because it's black paper and you have to you're not allowed to see any black you know so you have to really go at it and as you're doing it, it's like, it's supposed to kind of bring up the feelings. Like cathartic? Yeah, it is. it is, uh, And it's surprising what comes up, you know, and wow. yeah. what changes people see um, in themselves, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, it, tell us about IFS and then, if you can, draw the painting model so that we've got a, a timeline, if you know what I mean, a sort of like an integrated experience for people. And also um, you do meditation, I believe. Um, no. Oh, um, no. Like in IFS, we kind of um, would guide people through a bit of a meditation kind of. Would you be able to do that for our audience? Would that be um, a difficult thing to do? Uh, um in this forum um we could try a short one yeah okay. I mean, yeah we could maybe yeah kind of yeah. after i've explained a bit more about yeah IFS. yeah um, but I, I just thought you've got all these as tova calls them tools um yeah. but i'm thinking more of just having that flow for human beings to just flow and the other thing that as you were speaking before it's not something that I've questioned you about pre, prior to our meeting, but I got a feeling of the soul being involved, mm. you know, our, our other, you know, the part that we never talk about, our spiritual part. Right. And the, this ISF just goes into that idea. Not, it doesn't actually explicitly say that, but in listening and hearing it, I hear that the soul is is clean, cleansed, healed, something or other like that. I don't know if I've just put that on you just now without um, without you knowing about where I was coming from, but that was my feeling as I listened okay. to you just now. Yeah. So if you can incorporate that a little bit more, that would be lovely for our people, because yeah. in this day in in this day and age, all of these parts of us are actually hidden from us. You know, in the public sphere, we don't talk about those sort of things. But in the private sphere, 
in our own minds and in our own selves. It's always part of us. It's always a living part of us. So just to, to draw that gently out, if you could. Right. Yeah, yeah. IFS is, is a very interesting model because, as you said, it does have like this kind of spiritual element, which basically calls the true self. Um, so there's the true self. And in IFS, the goal is to let your true self be the leader kind of so that you're you're working you you're kind of operating from your true self which as you can imagine is quite a big goal to have you know um yeah. but um what we do in ifs is we 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 label things parts so we would say there's a part of me that um doesn't like change you know there's a part of me which gets very angry, you know. Um, so we we kind of use what we call the language of parts. Um, uh, and each part, so instead of saying I'm angry, we would say I have an angry part. And that shifts things a lot, you know, because when you say I have an angry part, there's me and there's the angry part. And then I can be in relationship with this angry part. And I can, you know, I feel it in my body. Where's the anger? You know, I feel it rising and blushing, and, you know. So feeling the power of the anger. And then I'm, but then I'm like looking at it and saying, oh, you know, I can see you there. Like, what's going on? What are you trying to do for me? What are you trying to do in my system? You know, so it's a very different way of um you know instead of saying i'm angry you know kind of exploring yeah, feeling. yeah. and it creates ownership you then own the anger rather than the anger owning you would that be right right yes so you've got that bit of distance so it's not taking over yes you know and then you can listen to it and it might say to you you know, I'm fed up of people like stepping all over me, you know, yeah. so I don't want you to feel like the anger might be telling me, I don't want you to feel that, you know, kind of you can't defend yourself, stuff like that. Yeah. So, but there, um, you know, it, I'm going to interrupt you. Um, but there are people who, you know, have had very bad traumas in childhood or adulthood or having enormous symptoms. You know, how would you approach someone like that who is so um, triggered? Right. You know? Right. In so, regard to being angry. Yeah. Well, or we got well, they're triggered and they're they're having a hard time. You know, even like I'm looking at. I know I I just just came on that. Like for me, I didn't know anything about it till a few years ago. My own daughter did some work with it and. There's some wonderful, and Dr. Howard Schubiner was talking to Richard Schwartz, you know, so I know it's something special about it, though. Um, how would you calm someone down, you know, using IFS if they were really triggered or really um, having symptoms and they had a hard time even, even relating with you? Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Um, well, there's kind of different layers because you have that layer of that what we call the anger is like a protector you know it comes in to protect you but what is it protecting you know so it's protecting kind of that part of you underneath which feels vulnerable which has been hurt before like which might be carrying trauma and we call that the exiles because that you mm -hmm. We say like the system like exiles these painful feelings, so it doesn't have to keep feeling them all the time. Wow. But the cost that you pay, the price that you pay, is that you're always having to protect the exiles from keep popping up because every time someone triggers you, the exiles will keep popping up with the old pain. So so in IFS we kind of we would kind of get to a stage where we work with the protectors. Once they let us, we kind of get their permission to work with the wounded parts, the traumatized parts. And then we go to the traumatized parts and work with them, bringing 
what we call the self energy, the true self, that spirit to help heal. The, I'm telling you like standing on one foot because, no, you know. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's a beautiful explanation. And it really is. It's nothing. Look, you know, it's we all come from a similar place of wanting to help people be in touch with, you know, their and feel safe and understand that it's, you know, the threat is perceived. So it's beautiful how we all come to the same similar thing with such beautiful um, explanations. And this is something very different, but the same. Yeah. And you're explaining it very beautifully. I think um, like safety, like in IFS, you know, in uh, psychoanalysis or whatever, they say, oh, you're resistant, you know. In IFS, it's totally not like that. We very much value the protectors. Ooh. Because they're what has helped us survive, you know. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, None of the things that patients do are wrong. It's just that the, it's right. run out of its usefulness, isn't it? Right. It reaches and then you, you're helping the patient see that this protector isn't really doing any protection in, right. uh, anymore. It's working so, great. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I've had clients who the, the atmosphere in the house is horrible, so they'll just go to their room. Because that's like the only place where, you know, maybe the parents will give them some space or they won't hear the arguments or whatever, you know. But then what happens is if that becomes safe for them to just be in their room, then as adults, you know, they, they're going to be very lonely because they've kind of cheated themselves out of good relationships because mm -hmm. that's become second nature to them, you know. So yeah. then it's working with the protectors to help the protectors kind of relax enough to let the people, to let the person build, you know, relationships which are healthy. So, wow. yes. Yeah. Um, so it but, sounds like IFS and Rose mentioned this to me that it's really focuses about the relationship with, like you said, your true self or the self that needs compassion or the self that needs um, taken care of. Compassion is a big part of IFS. We see it as one of the main like qualities of the true self. So mm -hmm. if you're in compassion, you're usually in touch with your true self. So if you feel compassion for the child who was, you know, bullied, like if you'd see yourself as, a, as you were when you were a child and you were being bullied, you know, there might be a part which says, um, why didn't you fight back? You know, why didn't you go and tell the teacher? Why? There might be like blaming parts, but when you can get to a compassionate part of kind of seeing what the child was really going through, that's like starts bringing in the healing. Yeah. Self-compassion. Yeah, it's very powerful. Yeah. yeah. So in actual fact, you juxtapose the compassionate part with the blaming part and ask which part do you want to own? Is that what you're saying? You, you, we're talking to someone who was bullied and now feels that they're, every time someone directly questions them, they almost feel like they're being bullied again. So in actual fact, you put it to them that the part of them that needs to hold their hearts is the compassionate part, but the part that wants to criticise them are you asking the person to actually notice the different parts in themselves so they can choose which part? Would that be what um, you're saying? We'd, sometimes you, you can get the blaming part to like step aside uh -huh. so that you can kind of put that blame aside so you can listen to the story. And when you hear yes. this child telling you the story, it becomes evident that there wasn't any blame, you know, but sometimes yeah. the blaming parts won't let you listen to the story. So you have That's to right, work yeah. with the blaming part and listen to it's, you know, what it's telling you, um, you know, and, and kind of help that blaming part relax before the compassion can come in. So there's a lot of blocks to the true self. So, our job is partly to kind of keep removing the blocks. It's like the sun with the clouds. I think in IFS is quite a good uh, comparison we give, you know. 
it's kind of as you remove the clouds you can see the sun which was always there Beautiful. yeah so yeah but you know reading about tms and seeing like all the different parts that play a role in tms like the perfectionist and um what other parts was i reading about people um, pleasing especially people pleasing yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. these parts we would work with ifs to see like why you know what's a perfectionist coming from yeah and it's so why, yeah. you know i'm sorry to mean to interrupt but i was just thinking about how um you know there are so many times when we're in pain or we're in trauma where we feel like the victim it's hard to get people out of that place they're just they like they tend to like end up they just become such a habit and in hebrew we the word is called a korban which is a sacrifice the word for sacrifice and i think this is such if people if people could see themselves being a victim i don't know i don't know i, I can't really explain like how you know i think it's a key and it's it's like a, sad because they they're like they're they're stuck in that cycle of, we of would, you want to explain it from an ifs point of view yeah we would it, say that that part is carrying a lot of helplessness like it's hopeless, it's helpless, and it's not coming from now. Because sometimes you say, "Why can't they just kind of, you know, be a right. bit motivated? Why can't that right. person pick themselves up?" But they can't because they're stuck in that child's place, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Right. So what we what we do in our affairs is like we'd go, we'd get enough the person like enough in touch with their true self to be able to go to the child. And very often the system will send you a memory. Like it will just send you a scene and you can see the scene and we kind of step into the scene, you know, with enough of the true self. And the child is carrying what we call burdens of helplessness and hopelessness mm -hmm. and wow. thinking I'm not good enough and stuff like that. And when the child trusts you enough, we ask this and this is another like spiritual element that we bring in. It's a bit like, I think it's originally from like some people with um, shamanic like experience and all that. So we ask um, the, the child to take these burdens out of the body or the, that is holding in the body, the hopelessness and stuff. And we ask them to imagine it going to the elements. We say to fire, to the wind, uh, it could go into the earth. It could go into the sea. That's part of so, IFS. That's part yeah, of. Yeah, it's IFS. very visual. It's very imaginative, but it's it's changing the brain patterns. You know, it's yeah. it's it's having an effect on the neurology of the brain. So we're kind of taken through this imaginary thing where they let go of what you're calling that victim consciousness or whatever, but they can actually get it out of the system so that they. They come back and the child, and then we invite in what does this child need from now onwards? It could be play, it could be laughter, it could be friends, it could be joy. You know, you get beautiful answers from people. Yeah. yeah. Very, it's very beautiful work. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about decision making in that model. Um, because so often. Patients I've got, got a lot to say. I keep interrupting you. <laughs> um, That's all right. It's a round table. There's so no rules. <laughs> so we look like, say, if somebody's trying to give up smoking, yeah. Mm -hmm. So people usually try and get you to make that decision by telling you how good it would be for you to stop smoking and how bad it is for your health, but. In IFS, we would look at the parts which want to smoke. Wow. You know, and not squash them down. Exactly. So we kind of yeah. we kind of face things head on, like pain, you know, with TMS, you know, we face things head on. And you know, if it's anger, we're not scared of making the pain worse or making the anger worse or whatever. We really want to relate to it, you know. So if somebody wants to give us smoking, we'll look at, well, you know what are the parts which want to keep smoking because otherwise they're going to sabotage any efforts to give up smoking mm. you know so for every decision 
you kind of look at what parts have something to say about that. Yeah. And also in that regard, there'd also be a part that would say, well, what was the benefit of the smoking? How, how right. did that benefit you? And is that still necessary or something? Wouldn't there be something like that involved? Yeah, yeah. maybe. So that they can make a decision about rather than be driven because this, you know, I often think about, you know, like at Bondi Beach, um, you've got this great surf, but on either side of it, you've got this really calm water. And unfortunately, the people that aren't familiar with the ocean go into the calm water, but underneath the calm water is a whole lot of turmoil. Right. And that's actually, if you're talking about giving up smoking, what's the point in looking at that packet of cigarettes and saying, I want, I want, I want, which is an internal fight, isn't it? Whereas what you're saying is see what the benefit was for you, which would have been to calm your nerves or whatever. Isn't, isn't that what you're, what you're drawing on? The yes, fact that well, there's this true self as well underneath that recognises the suffering that that person, uh, you, you know, that inner child uh, aspect is alive and well in the person. And then they bring out in the dialogue that you have, that's brought out the fact that there's this inner turmoil going on that isn't necessary, that the yeah. waves can sort of flow normally and the true self can be available to the person. Yeah? Right. Yeah. The, one of the things we do in IFS, it's like a, we call it polarisation, the tug of war, you know. Yeah. So, so there's the part of you which wants one thing and the part of you which wants something else, you know. Yes. So we look at each part and listen to it. So the part that wants to smoke might want comfort, might want, you yeah. know, and but the, the part that doesn't want to smoke kind of is at loggerheads with it. But if we can get them to understand each other and how they're each trying to help you. Yes, that's you know, right. Both of them. Can, yeah. Right. They're yeah. trying to help you in different ways, you know, and they might kind of, they, the help might be backfiring, but it's knowing that the parts have positive intentions for you, which is an important thing. Mm -hmm. And then once you recognize that, you can appreciate the part and you can thank it. And you can say, well, I know you want to bring me comfort. Would you be open to other ways of finding comfort? You know? Lovely, beautiful. You really develop a dialogue, which is so important. Right. It's so yeah. much about listening. But the good thing is it, IFS gives you the tools to kind of look inside and get the dialogue going, you know. And mm. when anyone who, ha who has some IFS therapy starts getting um, used to the questions that the therapist asks them, like, you know, what, are your, what is the part of phrase will happen if they don't do that? Like, what is the angry part of phrase will happen if they don't make you angry? So, so then you kind That's of. That's a good question. What will the angry? Tell me again. Say that again. This is an interesting concept. That, yeah. So, yeah. what is the angry part of phrase will happen if it doesn't make you angry? Right. What will the angry part of you say to yourself if you're not made angry by? by like a direct question if it doesn't make you, you angry about something so if the anger is not there what could be there right so yes if it, okay if, so what would know, replace the angry feeling angry, maybe you know if it doesn't make you angry maybe you'd be feeling um like a failure maybe you'd be you know maybe you'd yeah. be feeling helpless you know and none of us want to feel helpless you know um, you'd be feeling hopeless, feeling suicidal. You know, some people, they literally tell me that, you know, they if that part wasn't doing what it was doing, they literally feel so low that they're suicidal or they would not be able to come out of the depression or, you know. Yeah. Because the they've anger, been the, the, the anger is connecting them. 
The anger is connecting them to something or somebody. No, it's taking them away. Taking them away. It's taking yes. them away it from the, you. the horrible feelings. Yeah. But then you're connected to the anger. Right. <laughs> So it's you doing need this to job. Be connected to the anger. Like connected to the anger, it's not yeah. you're not in touch with the side of you that doesn't want to right. live anymore. Or but you, but you, but the, but the anger is keeping you alive. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. More or less, like the anger is keeping you going the because you have helping this. Helping you survive. It's yeah. helping yeah. you survive. Yeah. Wow. I, I think it's, also, I think Tova, the difference between anger and rage needs to be separated right. out because you right. see, our anger is our defensive mechanism. But the, the discharge or the holding back of your anger then creates the ragey feeling. So I think Esther is talking about that ragey feeling coming out rather than the defensive mechanism because one draws you into safety and the other draws you into retreat, doesn't it? Um, do, you know, do you know what I mean? If I want to punch someone, um, that's very defensive. Whereas if I'm angry with what's happened, I'll say, well, I, I feel hurt about what you just said. Do you know, it's a, it's a more gentle way of, of right. being. And then your anger looks after you. Whereas in a way, well, we, there's to another out. type of parts <laughs> to make it a bit more complicated. There's other types of parts uh, in IFS, which are protective parts, but they're called firefighters. So they're like, it's like the ambulance comes in when like, you know, you're in danger. So the fire, like the rage would be what we call a firefighter. This is when like you're really in danger of, you know, feeling pain and all that. So then the fire, like the rage would rush in, you know. Wow, um, yeah. So the anger would be a protector, but the rage would be the type of protector, which is a firefighter. And it's equivalent to an alcoholic taking a, a glass of whiskey, you know. It's kind of the firefighter when he feels like, I can't cope with my feelings anymore, I've got to drink, you know. Mm. Mm. So that's like the extreme measures, you know. Yeah. So, so I can see now how intuitive, intuitive painting, you'd have a whole palette of, um, palette sort of indicates colours, but in actual fact, a whole palette of, of things you could draw or write about intuitively, couldn't you? Right. So, yeah. like, if you're feeling anger, you know, to take some oil pastels and just draw, like, draw it out, you know. Mm. Use the colours that are expressing that anger, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It really helps you get to a different place and it it kind of also discharges some of the feelings so you're more rational, you know, because a lot of us, we just get like taken over and then kind of, you can't, you can't reason with yourself. Like, you know, you're kind of a bit out of control, triggered or whatever, but you can't get yourself out of it, you know, whereas putting it, like getting it out on the paper, or whatever, you're kind of calmer and then you can think about, well, what's, you know, what's going on here? Why am I so activated, you know? Um, so, yeah, there's, you know, for quite a bit of the IFS work, you need a therapist. Like, you need someone to kind of go with you to those places. To guide um, you. Yeah. To guide you. Yeah. Even though in IFS, like, I'm always getting my client to get in touch with themselves. So it's, they're attaching to themselves. They're not really attaching to me, you know? Yeah. So it's quite well, a different goal, model. It? That's it's a therapy. different model. What would be some yeah, of yeah. the homework? Like what could someone do at home? Like you give them this information, you introduce them to their parts. They just have to learn awareness and, and mindfulness about when those parts come up and, and how to react, respond to them as opposed to react. Just to listen, yeah. Just to say you know, um, some homework could be if we've just worked with an inner child, so to just visit it every day and just say, hi, are you okay, you know? And other things is just to start becoming, like, aware of your parts, you know? You don't have to do a lot of work with them, but, that, oh, you know, when she said that to me, my angry part came up, or, 
you know so you just start kind of being aware of the different parts of you and when they're coming up you know so I, I just you, that is you are really yeah. I hear you saying like to have these to have a language of these parts would be a healthy way to witness you know rather than get so involved and subjective right. that we can witness what's happening and that's part of what the work the work right. that rose taught me a lot about observing and witnessing and responding and we learned that with the michael brown um presence process work that if we could respond and observe or be curious as rose always tells me curious yeah um, we're 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 on our journey we're progressing we're not stuck we're moving yeah so, and knowing okay. it gives you a lot of confidence to know that every part is trying to do something positive for you even though it doesn't yeah. feel like it you know it doesn't feel like well the inner child but if if you talk about the inner child the inner child sees that as a benefit doesn't it the inner child in us sees that the part that isn't helpful is helpful yeah like there's a the conflict within from within an earlier part of their lives of a person's life yeah i'm not sure if i'm following you okay um, okay more. well we're talking about conflict for example right. and instead of responding we react yeah so that reaction is brought in from an earlier age and what right. you would call inner child right. that's in the present moment. Right. Yeah. That's not where I'm coming from. Yeah. 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 Not necessarily. It might just, I mean, you could go through trauma as an adult, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a child part, you know? Um, okay. So the inner child could be from an adult. Right. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm saying that could be a traumatized part. The traumatized part can be later on in life. It doesn't, not all traumas carried by the inner, ch inner children kind of thing. You know? Okay. If it's, a, so, if it's, a, if it's a newer, a newer trauma, right? Yeah. You know? But there can still be an exile because you might have gone through something. Say you were in a really bad car accident and you just say, I'm not going to think about it. You know, what's the point of thinking about it? I just have to get back in the car, drive, and, you know, I'm not going to let it rule my life, you know? So you are kind of, but by doing that, you're squashing down all the parts which were in the car accidents, which were, you know, which, which was so shocked and scared and, you know, yeah. um, so that, so then you're exiling those parts, you know? So that can also be triggered. So, these things that the so things you that bring you in those exiled parts to be heard, right? Like um, yeah. somebody, like you know, one of my clients quite a long time ago. She had uh, a a difficult birth. You know, she she when she was giving birth, she had a very difficult time. So we went back to her. It was only like five or ten years before that, but we still went back to the birth and witnessed her feelings as she was. In labor yeah. and yeah. you know so yeah. yeah yeah and you undid so. the fear or the patient um, undid the fear in actual fact yeah, uh, yeah. it wasn't just yeah. fear it was oh, yeah <laughs> it's not it's it's not simple and it's always surprising what what's being held you know in the system yeah yeah, yeah. but um yeah, in terms of what people can do, I mean, there's a lot of IFS videos on YouTube um, that people can watch if they feel that IFS could be a useful way of them exploring their feelings mm -hmm. and the feelings in the body more, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and in terms of tools, um, it does take a bit of getting your head around the model to kind of start using them as tools, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's not uh, where think, something you know that, like I think, I think all of our, all of our, all of the coaches and I know Rose and I we you know and I know with ICDP there's um, a language and um, 
that a language that serves them, that helps them, that that soothes, that comforts them, and that they can feel hopeful, a hopeful language of language of belief. And so, because they they it's um, not that we're changing them, but Rose will call it a character change. We'll see different behavior, different relationships. We're back to the relationship, but I think it's it's good for people to say, well, I, I have to start speaking a new language, a language of love, a language of compassion. I always talk about with every patient about one of our shows where this Dr. Patricia Coughlin came on, who's a ICDP oh, therapist. And Esther, Esther comments on many of our shows before, before this show. I enjoy listening to your show. Yeah, she's well on it. But, and I'd say, I'd said to Dr. Coughlin, like, how can people, people are finding it hard to love themselves, to speak this language. It's, why is it so hard? Like, how does one love themselves? And why is it so difficult? Why are we so separated from that, that language? And she and I always repeat this. She says, "It's like loving a, a puppy or a child." And I don't mean to simplify it, but we all love puppies and children, so we're all capable. We all have done that. We've had that lag. We have that pathway of loving a child and loving pe people are so loving to other people and, and not to themselves. And that's how we can sort of mirror. Hey, you know how to do this. I you're in a relationship also, with that with that with that child so you can do this yeah. with yourself yeah yeah being in a relationship with so when you go back like sometimes you re, you have a memory and you kind of you know this happened to you you know as a child or whatever but when you actually go back into the memory and kind of re-experience it from the child's point of view because in IFS, you'd get the child to tell you, you know, what what he or she is going through. So you you listen to it and the things that that you might have blocked at the time, the the child will start telling you things. And you're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's how I felt. Or or suddenly you you can feel the full extent of the feelings which had been squashed down before. So that self-love and self-compassion really grows because, you know, you see the child kind of with, without all the kind of feelings which have been pushed down, you know. And yeah. the, the goal with IFS is for, like, for us to, um, to experience joy, really, for the child to be able to let go of the bad experiences, uh, to let... Cause, all kids experience, you know, pain, whether it's in school or at home or with friends, whatever, you know. But um, once they can let go of that, then the natural joy of being a child, you know, the curiosity and all the natural qualities start coming up again, you know. And the same with the parts that I feel, oh, I have to get everything perfect, you know. Or I have to be on the go all the time. Once they can let go of these expectations because they feel more connected to themselves, to the true self, so then there's a lot less like stress in the system, which hopefully translates also into less pain in the body. You know? mm -hmm. Could I just interrupt and sort of suggest that patients will say, but how do I do it? Right. And, and what Esther is saying is observing what you're doing is the key. Observing it, seeing how that turmoil is happening within you, observing it, just being away, being out of the... Uh, what's and then what? The, uh, I observe it and then what? Well, in order to That's observe it, you also have to be open enough to be curious about it. Right. Because... A lot of us observe things, but we we have like negative reactions to them. Like I shouldn't be feeling this we way. Ju we judge. We judge it. We judge it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we're back to Instead acceptance. Of, but, we're back to but acceptance. that's the open heart that Esther's talking about. The judgment, right. noticing the judgment, 
stops the open heart sort of happening, doesn't it? Whereas that part that wants to be the judge is to block down the open heart in a way, isn't it? That compassionate right. part. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's getting to a place of curiosity where, you know, even with pain, if somebody's got a pain in their back, you know, and their back's been hurting and, you know, like so many, so much of it is like, oh, let's get rid of the back pain. You know, let's uh, let's call Dr. Toba for some chiropractic treatment, you know, um, you know, I hate it. This back pain isn't letting me live my life. And so it's very hard to get curious, you know, it and is. it's hard to yeah. feel compassionate towards yourself. For having the back because pain, pain, pain the, the acute pain is not chronic pain, and acute pain is not anxiety. And a chronic pain, like people, you know, it's counterintuitive some of the work that Rose and I do because it's it, it's not pain that means something is wrong. It's pain that means listen and be aware and be curious. And so, this is where we're back to the education of the medical system of. Hey, you have acute pain, go to the doctor. But if it's chronic, and now we know from Sarno's work about the disc, and it's we get back to really about educating. And now you're an educator, you know, and um, I think it's wonderful for people to continue to be their own doctor, which I like to say, or question their doctor, or go in and say, Doc, I know that you're telling me, like, I'm just taking this a little further because how many people do we meet that are just petrified by their visit with the doctor right. that they've been, they've been, they've been traumatized by the doctor. <laughs> I don't no, want to get into that right now, but anyway. Yeah. No, but even the fear, like talking about fear of like, you know, so that back pain, so parts of you want to get rid of it, you know, parts of you are like, well, just carry on. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna stop soon, you know, and parts of you are scared because it's like, you're thinking, well, if if this back pain back pain gets worse, I'm not going to be able to work okay. go to work tomorrow, you know, yeah. or I want to go to the cinema tomorrow night and I won't be able to go. And so all these, so it's get hard to get curious about the back pain because there's so many different reactions. So if you can start like teasing them apart, you know, and Sometimes what I do is I just get a blank sheet of paper. This might be useful for people. And yeah. instead of like journaling, which is like longhand, you know, I just write the parts and like something about them, maybe a couple of words, you know. So a tired part, like it's telling me I don't sleep enough and I make like a little bubble around it. So I've got, okay, tired part, you know, wants more sleep, you know. Um, backache, you know, like, uh, you know, part which is giving me backache, you know, uh, I'd say like maybe it wants to lie down, you know, and then I get a worried part, say, you know, my daughter's mm -hmm. not feeling well, so I'm worried about her. And I'll do like little bubbles on the page of mm -hmm. like different parts which are coming up in my life you know like i can usually fill a page like a, an a4 page you know but it just helps you kind of get an overview of like you know what parts are kind of active and it helps you and it helps them be seen like oh you know oh she is aware that she's tired you know she is aware so maybe there's a chance that she will lie down for half an hour you know so the parts start feeling like Oh, there's something, there's someone there who cares about us, who wants to listen to, to what we're trying to say. No? So I hope this makes so, sense because you can get into jargon, you know, and it's like, I, I want this to be accessible for people. You know? Yeah. So the true self mentions on this piece of paper that I'm always tired. No, yet, so the true self is the person who's, the part of you which is witnessing all these different parts having their yeah each one yeah. having their story as they it were. Say. Yeah. yeah 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 so then, then it, does the true it's self like the then sorry it's like you know the buddhists sometimes they say well i am not my body i'm not my feelings i'm not you know so yeah. it's like the true self is looking at saying 
what's going on with that's why we call it family you know what's going on with the people in this family you know yeah 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 so, so the true self sense, right? observes <laughs> and then the true self has compassion for right. all those troubles is what yeah i mean this is and how i'm so reading healing. what you're saying yeah it's so healing yeah you know when i can yeah. have compassion for the back pain it's so much better than trying to you know fix it and trying to push it away and trying to get rid of it you know i'm like mm. oh you know yeah. this part it's there for a reason person. isn't it like yeah 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 so yeah. for our audience if i can just encapsulate what esther is saying is that there none of the parts of us are bad or wrong or need we need to get rid of we need to acknowledge them and ask them what they're there for. Would would that would that encapsulate the work you do as we describe yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And one yeah. good way of doing that is through the body, like mm. focusing on the sensations, you know. So if you've got that back pain, you know, what how does it feel that back, you know, kind of focusing on it is what kind of pain is it? You know, is it like, uh, what color would you say? Would you say it's a red? You know, would you say, you know, so if you want, you can just draw it with like, make some marks, but you know, what kind of pain is it? And and as a way of like, kind of getting into it, you know, and sometimes an image might come up, you know, some people say, oh, I can see a, a tunnel or, or it feels like a cloud, there's a whole cloud covering it. Or, you know, so yeah. images will come up and that's kind of sometimes a way in, you know, to focus on the images and then say, oh, you know, like talk to the cloud and say, oh, I notice you're here, you know, what, what, what are you trying, what are you doing here? What are you trying to do? What's your message? In my system. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there's a lot of wisdom in the body. You know? Well, yeah. well, it's our body that holds us, isn't it? I mean, yeah. 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 and often yeah. it's like the Rosetta Stone, isn't it? You you need to have the formula to read it because on your yeah. own it can't be read that well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we always like, in IFS, the therapist isn't like, you know, the all-knowing, like, analyzer and all that like if a client doesn't know like something i say okay ask the part you know wow yeah. so we'll let the part i don't have to be figuring out what this part is trying to tell my clients you know i'll yeah. just say or if i'm not sure if like the anger is connected to the rage so i'll say well ask the angry part if mm -hmm. you know is, is, is the rage, is it something that, are they connected, you know? Are they working together, they're helping each other? So, you know, there's a kind of... So it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful calming concept that your emotions can be together and be aligned and be live together and one is not negative. I mean, we all grew up with like, there was a negative emotion, a positive, I mean, it's fast. It's it's fascinating to 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 understand that because yeah. it it really it really can take you much further to be to be at one with all those things and to invite them in and to be with them or sometimes say have coffee with your pain or yeah. invite your fear in for breakfast. <laughs> People will be shock. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here, you know. Um, yeah. You know, not to have that like there's parts of me I don't like, you know. And I, yes. I kind of blame myself for or whatever. You just mm. like, okay, this part is here. Maybe I don't like it, but there might be a good reason why it's here. You know. And or when when you know, I'll ask someone, what's what's the message of your pain? And they'll be, I don't know. And I, I like to say, Rose taught me this. Well, then, is it okay that you don't know? Is it okay? You right. don't have to know. Yeah. You don't have to know. That's where you're at. You're just in that place of being curious so be curious right you know, sometimes don't know also, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah sometimes we also get like dissociating parts so like there's there's a part which is gonna block you know so if if this part 
feels that if I get into my back pain, I'm going to hear things which are going to destabilize me, upset me or whatever. So it will just come and block, you know. And then I'm like, well, I can't, I've lost touch with that pain. It's like I can't access it anymore. So, you know, and that's, we have to kind of, it's not that, that part's not trying to be awkward or anything. It's just jumping in because it feels like, oh, she's getting overwhelmed now. I've got to do something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, aren't human beings amazing? It, it never, ever ceases to astonish me what amazing creatures we are and how we manage. And in the management, often it's mismanagement that we end up with. But there are so many parts of us and we're so deep. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, we explore out of space. But it seems like we should be exploring inner space. Ah, I love that. More. Rose. <laughs> Rose. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Amazing. It's a lot so of Rose, Rose, Rose has to see a client in, in the morning in Melbourne. And um, but I I'm enjoying talking about this and it's been interesting. And uh, Rose, do you have any more questions for Esther before we well, say I just minute? I just love how Esther shared with us this whole concept. And also, I, I would have liked actually for us to, um, to just give a moment all together as a group for one another, just for one another, to just breathe in that space that Esther's talking about, where we need to be able to have that little bit of inner space to actually reach into ourselves and see what those parts want to tell us. Wow. Because without that, without that little bit of space, we can't look. Yeah. And that's why the work that Esther does, it's difficult to do on your own. And most of the therapy is difficult to do on your own. And, you know, banning part of you, putting aside part of you is not the answer. It might keep things quiet for a little while. But, you know, in ISTDP, we call it character change. And ISF, it's the same thing, character change, so that whatever assails us isn't going to break us. It's just going to be part of the tempest of life because that's the beauty about life. It's not quiet. It's <laughs> always on the move, yeah. always, from birth to death. Rose, that was profound. Yeah. Wow, Rose. You've got Rose's philosophy here. Beautiful. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Esther, so yeah. we're really um, so happy that we finally met. And I know you've, it's been like a while that you, I've seen your name on the show. And then I met you uh, in Modine a few months ago. And then we connected. So I'm really happy, happy that you're here in Israel. Thanks, Esther. Happy that yeah. you met Rose. Um, now, Normally, we've got some questions of people on the side. But yeah. when this goes up on YouTube, if anyone's got any questions, please put it in the chat part and either yeah. Esther can acknowledge it or sure. we'll acknowledge it. And please, you know, just because we haven't got anything on the sidebar doesn't mean that we can't find out what you really wanted to know sure. about ISF or being being healed or any of the other um, ancillary things. Yes. So this thank you so YouTube, much, Esther. YouTube. And good night, both of you. Yeah. Okay. 11 o'clock at night. You're mm -hmm. fantastic for spending <laughs> so much. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to. That gonna... way, we've got almost the whole world covered. At this yes. Time. Right. It's yeah. true. Yeah. We're global. Yeah. So, and this yes. will be up on YouTube tomorrow, and anyone will get to see it. We're very excited yeah. that you came and spoke with us tonight. Thank you very much. It's been lovely. All the best. Good morning from Melbourne. Bye. Thank you.